Who's your person? Stuart Elliott. I desperately wanted to, if, before I died, somehow to work for Stuart Elliott. And I didn't have a seat or a desk. I would stand. <laughs> and my, my role really was to Xerox and staple. There's a woman named Felicity Barringer. She's an editor. She had just come down from the Weekend Review section. She didn't know who anybody really was. I was in the building, had my suit on, had a tie on. And she overhears me talking about this thing called the internet. She assigns me this article to write. She says, write this 500 words. And that's how my career began. So, um, <laughs> where is your place? So my place is uh, Woodstock, Vermont. In particular, it's the green in Woodstock, Vermont. It just brings me back to that, to that moment of childhood of this idea that you can do anything. We used to lie there and just dream. It was a dreaming thing. It was about what, could, what was possible. I think everything for me has always been about proving to myself I could do something. Could I really write an article? Could I ever write a, another thing? Could I, could, I, could I write a TV show or a book or a movie? or what, Could I actually do it? That's, I think seem, that's what drives a lot of it. You seem so confident. No. Oh, I have no confidence at all. <laughs> Imposter syndrome. That's what I, but I do feel that way. Well, we're Jews. Stuff. Of course we feel that way. That's, you know, it's, that's our cultural heritage. What's your thing? This license plate, I'd actually tried to get it framed. Uh, at the Paris Framer across the street on Amsterdam about two and a half years ago, and I think that they still have it. <laughs> but it's something that, well, minus the fact that it's still at the Framer, does mean, does mean something to me uh, because yeah, it's it, 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 too yeah, big yeah. to fail, and the book and everything else, and that whole period from a reporting perspective and career perspective played a huge role in my, my life. People who brought the country to, to the brink of disaster, right. um, you know, the company pays a fine, which is to say nobody pays a right. fine. No one, like you get a fine, someone else pays it for you. Right. Why doesn't anybody go to jail? I think it becomes very hard to find the person. It's easier to bring the case against the company than the person. Then shouldn't entire corporations be put into jail? And, th and then what do you do? What do I do? I cackle gleefully. What do you mean, what do I do? <laughs> the world's never black and white. The world's very gray. And I just wish in an odd way that we could actually appreciate the gray and get to the middle and recognize that everything is not as as crystal clear as we always think it is. Mm -hmm.